Doctor Who Short Trips. After everything, I ended up back at Coal Hill School. It hadn't been a school for a long time. They converted it into flats over a hundred years ago. The building had more or less survived the first Dalek invasion, but there was so much work to do to get it habitable again, nobody got round to it before the second invasion hit. It had just been reopened when I was looking for a new place, somewhere smaller. I didn't need the space anymore. I could hardly say no when I realised it was available. It had always been a lovely old building, and now the playground had been torn up and a garden planted there. And in the quad, in the middle of the school, years and years ago, someone had planted an oak tree in memory of Ian and Barbara. It didn't say when they died. The plaque had obviously been replaced more than once, but the tree was a huge, gnarled and knotted thing. They'd had to cut it back when they renovated the place, as it had grown through several of the windows and caused a lot of damage. But I'm glad they didn't cut it down. Only a couple of the other flats were occupied, so it was quiet, but I didn't mind that. My flat was on the ground floor. Small, three rooms. I didn't have a lot of things. And the main room had previously been a classroom, where almost 250 years ago I'd been taught English. I remember quite clearly one afternoon when I sat by the window, which was now in my kitchen, reading the part of Cordelia from King Lear, along with the class, and confidently told the teacher, Miss Ireland, that this was nothing like what had really happened, and being told I was missing the point, and I was standing by that same window at 3.38 in the morning in late October, making myself some tea when the emergency call came in. We'd used a lot of salvaged Dalek technology in the process of getting ourselves back on our feet, mostly making use of their power generators and chemical synthesizers, and I'd been helping to make it compatible with what they had on Earth. Even then, the technology was security-equipped to resist being used by anyone who wasn't a Dalek. And although I'd hoped to move on to other projects by now, instead I was still spending a lot of my time tinkering with the equipment hoping I could get it to work better. The synthesizer I'd been working on earlier that day was set up in a warehouse in King's Cross, suspended in a web of virtual cable routers which could simulate the necessary Dalek commands. The upshot of the rather panicked call I received was that the synthesizer was doing things nobody had ever seen it do before. Its data output had gone haywire and it was draining energy from the local systems in huge waves. Big Finish. We love stories.